Good morning, my dear friends and my dear students. Welcome back to our classes. Today we are going to talk about History Unit 4, Intellectual Awakening and Socio-Political Changes. Do I look something different today? Yes, I hope. You all might be enjoying the video classes. Uh, I thought of uh, making myself look like uh, intellectual or look like a uh, great sadhu or uh, look like a great monk. That's why a uh, new get up today. To make you also realize in the 6th century, the great intellectuals who all emerged, who all brought, uh, who all made the people to think broad way, who all made the people to think in the humanistic manner. That's what the lesson we are going to learn today. The intellectual awakening and socio-political changes. That is the second part of it. To start with, what are things that we are going to learn in this lesson? Understand the changes of society from 6th century to the sec from the 2nd century. The familiarity ourselves to make known ourselves, whatever we have learned, to recall ourselves the essence of new religious faiths. We know about Hinduism, we know something about the Christianity, we know something about uh, uh, we call Islam. But what about other religion which emerged, which was born in India, the religion which are born in China, the religion which are born in Iran, what happened to them? Do we have any knowledge about it? Yes, my dear friends, to recall that, we have come to the, learn this lesson. Some of the religion like Buddhism, Jainism and Ajivika in India, Jurastanism in Persia, Confucianism and Taoism in China, specific to it. We are going to learn about it. The another main objective is to become aware of the circumstances, situations that led to the formation of states. Earlier people lived like uh, chief domes and the chief domes and chief stains. They later on developed into, in the previous lessons we learned about, later on they developed into uh, small uh, cities and towns. So about it, we are going to learn about it. Mainly focusing on Magadha Empire. So that is a major content that we are going to concentrate in this lesson. The another major important objective is to understand the social political changes. What happened during the rule of various kings? What happened to the society? Mainly of the pre-Maurian and Maurian states. We are going to concentrate specific to these uh, empires. So the objectives are, the first one, what happened, the society from 6th century to 2nd century, basically before Christ, to familiarize ourselves with the essence of new emerging or emerged religious faith, mainly Buddhism, Jainism, Ajivika, Jurastranism, Confucianism and Taoism is the first part of it the lesson called intellectual awakening. The second part of it, to come to know the situation, circumstances that led to the formation of the states, towns and states, focusing on Magadha Empire. At the same time, the social political changes that had take, took place during the pre-Maurian and the Maurian states, the empire. That's what we are going to learn about. So shall we go on or start with the lesson? Yes, I hope we will continue. To give you an introduction, a new civilization began to develop in the northern India, northern part of India. With the changes, a revival of trade and urbanization. In the previous lesson we talked about various uh, Tamil, uh, okay, Tamil society, how they had a trade with uh, various other countries. So, by the development of the trade and urbanization during the 6th century, 
they developed very much there was, there was lot of changes in the northern part of india at the same time there was a lot of political and social changes took place during this time 6th century it is because of a two great intellectual in india that is buddha and mahavira they have brought about change of thinking a different way of thinking of people in india following their death they were all good intellectual they brought about a lot of ideas but they when when they passed away and they died people started to take their ideas as a own and started a religion in their name so thus buddhism and jainism emerged to root this mean a new religious order were coming up many people followed them many followers they had it propagating encouraging bringing up a new faith at the same time the philosophies teachings they teach new many teachings came about similarly same way zoroastrianism in persia emerged a confucianism and the taoism in china became very popular during the 6th century so that's what we are going to talk about so what are the religion mainly we are going to talk about in the 6th century so we will take we will talk about indians religion later mainly buddhism jainism first we will talk about the religion which emerged in china iran and various other parts through the uh, different manners that's what we are going to talk about in the first session religion in the 6th century a new civilization that emerged it is also called as a new iron age this had a certain common future a uh, uh, particular very unique features they were characterized proliferation in the aspect of new crafts growth of long distance trade building of cities and towns race of universal universal in the sense the whole world is one universalist religion every whole world accepted it and evolution of code of conduct law code of conduct the rules and regulation which were accepted throughout the world by various people the 6th century was a period of exceptional development when you talk about uh, industrial development uh, green revolution and all that the same way when you talk about the 6th century something special something special when we talk about in the whole of history through the way of making the people to think in different manner is a period of exceptional development in a particular way in all spheres of life what are the areas of our life very very important role played in this 6th century are in the material manner cultural and intellectual when you talk about this particular period of 6th century we find a number of prominent men a great thinkers and founders of new religion already we talked about again we are just summarizing in the introduction the philosophical and religious thinkers such as confucius in china zoroaster in iran mahavira and buddha in india they gained a popularity they gained they became very famous in this particular century 6th century so as we are talked about all this so in specific we will start with the first one confucianism and taoism which emerged in china 
so before starting with what is the situation what we can first get the idea about this a uh, confucianism and taoism in the 6th century two great thinkers emerged they born in china confucius and laozi they followed and insisted on the system of moral and social behavior for individuals at the same time for the communities but after the death as usual which happened in india in the uh, tomb or in the name temples were built the philosophy they taught developed more and more and that became a religion it was known as confucianism and taoism the books that they wrote it was held in a great reverence in china even today confucianism extended a big influence not only in the political class of china but also on the common people so the ideas and their thinking not only affected or brought a revolution or changes in the political but also made the people to discipline themselves to live a happy life to have a concern on other people so it made a effect on not only the uh, political at the same time social common people's life so this is what we can talk about confucianism and taoism in general developed in china so we'll go to a particular confucianism what is this confucianism now you ourselves is we are confused okay so let's talk about confucius was a founder of this particular a uh, philosophy or the movement first we will develop with this they started a movement uh, they were thinking ideas and different thing so he was born in shangtan province of china in the year 551 bc he studied various subjects like history poetry philosophy and music so he had a knowledge about all these different fields after learning this he became author of various uh, imp- various books an important five books are the book of records which is talking about chiefly a ethical one providing guidelines for the regulation of human society the second book is the book of odes it is illustrating the sound principles of morality in songs it is a, because odes in the sense we learnt in english it's a scheme okay in the the method of kim he has written how a moral life of the people supposed to be the third one is a book of changes it is dealing with the metaphysics meta means beyond physics means uh, physic physical uh, touchable things so metaphysics means a beyond a material things when you talk about a rose rose is a flower but the fragrance we cannot touch and feel we can smell the sensation it's a feeling it is something like beyond that metaphysics the roseness we talk about human humanness human is a material humanness can we see the character of that now you cannot so that is called as a metaphysics so he also has written a book on that and he also written the book the spring and autumn annals it is a code of political morality and the fifth book it is a book of history narrating the events and legends situation what happened before and about the people the legends of the early religions of china so he has written about the people who also talked about developed 
religion or great thinking their ideas so on that he has written another book so these are his books on various aspects why do we talk about because of his teaching philosophy confucius why how he became a great thinker intellectual person it is because of the knowledge he received and the teaching he gave to the people so what are his teachings his teachings are mainly known as a five cardinal principles of confucius ethics what are those the main aspects he touches you have to think about it. he also has uh, studied uh, philosophy so he is going about metaphysics on the cons the first one humanness how a human supposed to be and some of his characters righteousness property that is politeness wisdom knowledge and trustworthiness which we have each on each one of us trustworthiness which we supposed to have it so on all these aspects he has talked about so based on these uh, five a uh, cardinal principles what are his sayings are what he is conveying to the people wisdom grows from the family yes or no it's right we are coming to the school we are going to the society but where do we get more knowledge about that we are human how we have to live how we have to love each other how we have to care for each other we learn from the family so that's what he said wisdom grows from the family on the foundation of the society to live in the society is a discipline individual in orderly family when we live in a family with a good discipline manner with the love and care we can live in the society a honest person a righteous person a polite person with the lord of wisdom and knowledge that's what he says and according to him a superior man who is a superior man it is not that who has lot of wealth and money who goes in the luxurious car and all that according to him, a superior man is not merely an intellectual scholarly who speaks a lot boasts about who has a lot of knowledge about where is it is not only that it is not intellectual and a scholar who has written lot of things no his character is to be extreme exemplary to others so sim to say according to him a superior man is who has a good character we know it a character how it supposed to be yes that's what he says and according uh, and also he includes more and more superior man of confucius supposed to have three virtues so based on that he we can judge so what are those three virtues intelligence courage good will so intellectual courage and good will these three virtues who possess he is a wise man so that idea is brought by confucius he also talked another great important thing we might be shocked because so far we haven't heard much about it the first one he says a children obeying parents wife obeying her husband and we can also add husband obeying their wives parents listening to their children he clearly proposed when a command is wrong listen carefully first concept he says children obeying their parents wife or husband vice versa we can talk about it is all common but when the command is wrong when a parent commands his children in a wrong way a son should resist his father and 
he can propose his own ideas and opinions so what he says is if something is wrong we have to obey our parents but if they are wrong we can ask them to change their ideas change their opinions so it is not only of the family on the other side also he is go about and the minister should resist the prince even if a king is not in the right manner he is not just a minister can resist what he says because nowadays very often we see for the sake of accepting for the sake of keeping ourselves in the friendly manner we accept whatever others say so if they are good friend of us we should resist if they are wrong our parents yes they have brought us if they are wrong we have to resist it is also same towards the government so when it came to be asked so because they have to twist they have to put him in the trouble so they asked what do you say about the government you said about the family and last he gave idea about the government the minister if the prince is wrong the minister can resist so at once they put another question what do you say about the government so he said for the government there are three requisites for it there should be a sufficiency of food normally one of our teachers you they used to say me we used to grumble we used to when the principal or the headmaster used to ask them uh, what is uh, what you don't like in the school or what you don't like in the boarding or the hostel they find uh, some people used to say a lot of negativity negative things and some people have only few positive things at last the principal used to say one particular condition at last i find only one concept if the stomach is full there is no complaint what does it mean if the food is provided in the good manner we will never find any mistakes there so that's what first thing he puts forward in the government there should be sufficiency of food another one sufficiency of military equipment so it is not only to protect ourselves healthy food at the same time we have to protect ourselves from the enemies so military equipment and the third one confidence of the people in their ruler the people should have a no- good knowledge they should have a good understanding they should have faith and confidence of their ruler that they will rule in a better manner so these three things are very very important when you talk about a government so these are the major teachings of confucius with that he developed his own theories we are going on to the next uh, religion a movement which is taoism which is also born in china the founder of taoism was lao tzu he was born in 604 bc when you talk about it lao tzu was 53 years older than confucius so when you talk about confucius that he has written about uh, legends of the past so he also might have written about lao tzu so it is understood and he was the greatest of the pre confucian philosophers before confucius he was always was one of the greatest philosopher he disliked actually with the uh, intrigue intrigue means the fault game played by the politicians the intrigues of politicians and prevailing corruption of his time so before confucius when he was living in 604 bc he disliked the way the method of rule of politician the uh, game they played the tricks that they played among themselves so he left china to live in a peaceful manner 
the peaceful abode he wants to live so he left china after moving away from there he wrote two books a book in two parts running about 5000 words so at the time just imagine writing about a book and that's also one particular book in two volumes that is also running about 5000 words and afterwards it seems to be that he disappeared from the place where he was living and even till today no one has a knowledge about where he has gone so as a monk he might have uh, lived in a desert some people think that he has uh, uh, vanished away from the world as a physical body so different thinking different ideas are there so that's what his uh, history when you talk about and his uh, one of his book that is tao te ching is a guide to the conduct of life it is also being translated in tamil you just uh, type in the google that is a uh, tao te ching so you will have a tamil version and you can uh, learn his uh, philosophy his more teaching mainly about the conduct of life how our life supposed to be how should we lead our life this is a good time for us because we are relaxing just to open these books uh, live in the uh, google or net some research and then please go through so when you talk about confucius we had a lot of knowledge about his one the five cardinal principles so what is his teaching that was even before uh, okay 53 years so what was their thing their ideas of the society and their living is he talked about the sorrowfulness unhappiness of us the unhappiness of human the unhappiness of the human in the world is selfishness when we see a pile of gold what do we think we just go and grab i i would have told you in the classes we have so many teachers who have given example if in the class if a uh, uh, number of students are there the same number of gold is piled up there so if you allow all those students what will happen will they take one each no everyone will go and grab the gold what will happen so many might have hurt got hurt injured so many uh, dangerous things can happen in the same way if we have to distribute that gold the pile of gold to each one one each what will happen everyone will be in happy situation so that's what he said human unhappiness in the world is because of human selfishness the selfishness creates unlimited human desire normally earlier this what happened we love to ride a bicycle we see others riding a gear cycle so at once we go and ask our parents desire or we will be riding a gear cycle at once we will see the scooty at once we will ask our parents buy me scooty and give okay they also buy we will be going by the scooty we see the gear bike fz royal enfield at once we'll go for it then we will see the cars then the luxurious cars so our desire never stops and it is also another man of selfishness whatever we bought previously from the bus to bicycle everything will be there in the home we never give to others so that's what selfish and we want to have everything that's what is a major cause of unhappiness of a human beings so desire leads to the selfishness selfishness lead to our unhappiness in nature all things act in the natural manner if it is a fire it will surely burn if it is a scorpion it will surely stink if it is a snake it will surely kiss you if you don't disturb it so the law of human conduct must correspond with the nature if the nature reacts in the manner of a natural way we should also 
react according to the nature today we are all affected by various nature calamities because of neg- negligence negligence of the teaching of taoism a teaching of laws we are not going according to the nature's law humans live a life under a regulation of someone by the guidance of always or uh, do the do this that's what our human life has become this is because we have acquired knowledge and have not remained innocent that's a major reason on the basis of their acquired knowledge they have built up urban civilization a big cities and towns because of their knowledge and have made themselves unhappy see how his teaching is a beautiful way he says because of our knowledge we have developed very much because of the same thing because of the same knowledge we have led our life to unhappiness so the major teaching of laws is desire leads to selfishness selfishness leads to our unhappiness so these are the major teachings of tao taoism that is a law words moving on to another place iran the religion that developed is zoroastrianism zoroastrianism is one of the oldest of the revealed world religion which is accepted worldwide it flourished in the same 6th century bc it remained as a straight religion in the particular place only in the particular place where it emerged it remained as a straight religion mainly of the iran empire but it dominated much of the middle east very much it developed over in the middle east so to talk about its founder zoroaster zoroaster of persia is the founder of zoroastrianism actually when you see his history he was paying to find his people worshiping the primitive deities uh, various types of statues and all this so he was shocked and he was uh, feeling very bad about it so he revolted again the worship of the deities the primitive deities and proclaimed to the world that there is only one god who is that god he is aurumazza the lord of light the light is the only god and there is no other god than this so based on his teaching he had uh, written a book zoroastrians zen avastha it is a collection of a sacred literature of the different epochs containing religious schemes invocation invocation means the way of praising god prayers talking to god confessions uh, uh telling about our uh, mistakes to god laws how people supposed to live their life myths various other uh, story which has the uh, knowledge uh, some of the when you talk about some truth in it so myths and sacred reminiscences some of the same uh, uh, way of uh, how to worship god all this some rites he has given about so which is also a holy book for the zoroastrians zen avastha he is also a philosopher so the doctrines and the rituals of zoroastrians have much similarity to those of the vedas so there is a lot of similarity when you talk about uh, between the zoroastrians as well as the uh, our vedas so there is some similarities are found so what type of teaching zoroaster might have brought about so you have idea about he was against the primitive deities and he talks about only the lord of light 
and he is uh, giving about how to have a good relation with uh, god and how to have a good human being so these are the his main ideas so how his teaching will develop into so they will talk about the teaching of zoroaster the great object of religion state or the society is a cultivation of morality the moral life of a person what is good what is bad this is what morality the highest religious conception way of acquiring the knowledge is the purity of thought words and the action deed so thinking speaking and in your actions so all supposed to be in good so that's what is the purity purity of thought words and deeds he very strongly said that one god aur mazda has seven quality aur mazda one god but he has a seven quality what are those qualities so he says we have to acquire those qualities in us then we can have a purity of thought action and words so first one aur mazda has the light good mind being right dominion piety well being immortality is for only gods we uh, attribute to gods immortal never ending so these are the seven qualities he uh, attributes to the aur mazda the lord of light he also gives some of the some of the other characteristics for this uh, major three it is all, all the religion everyone accepts this the aur mazda is the omniscient what is the meaning of omniscient omniscient mean who knows everything omnipotent omnipotent means one who is all powerful one who can do everything and he is also omnipresent who is present everywhere so god aur mazda according to zoroaster is omniscient omnipotent omnipresent in the zoroastrianism sacrifice and image worship is discarded is completely eradicated removed from their own ideas and understanding at the same time how the mazda which is the light so another form of life is a fire another form of light is a fire so fire was worshiped as a symbol of deity their god they the auru mazda is uh, what is a worship in the form of fire it is considered highest form of worship so normally they don't uh, give very much of a sacrifice but worship the fire the light and because he is giving more importance to the human kind so charity was made essential part of the religion giving alms to others who does not have so we come out of our own selfishness acquiring the uh, various other products and material things and service to the poor was particularly emphasized by this religion zoroastrianism by the uh, founder zoroaster yes my dear friends the first part in the first part of the lesson which is the intellectual awakening the only the first part we have seen the religion which developed around india to go about we will see in the next class so what are the topics we have gone about the first one we have gave about what the main objectives of learning this lesson the introduction about in the 6th century what is the development what are the ideas we had it and after going about we also learnt about the aspect of the religions confucianism and taoism which emerged in china and later zoroastrianism which emerged in iran 
the rest of the topic we will see in the next session thank you